everyone, this is Quinn here for Unleash Beauty and I am hanging out with the multi-talented Catherine McCormick from So You Think You Can Dance and Step Up Revolution. Catherine, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I know you've had a ton of success over the past year and I know it's probably been a total whirlwind, but I really just want you to take me back to the beginning. Because I know you're not originally from here, right? You're from Augusta, Georgia. Yeah. And I'm sure it was just crazy when you were 18, just picking up everything and just deciding to move to Los Angeles to pursue your dream. What was that whole process like back then? A lot of times you think that with dancers or actresses or whoever you're like, okay, when was the defining moment that you knew you wanted to live in New York or LA? Or why New York? Why LA? Why did you choose this? And for me, I felt like it wasn't really a choice in that way. I just had this gut feeling that I was supposed to be dancing or doing something other than just going to a school in Augusta, but I didn't know what it was. So I ended up taking time away from that and just teaching at the studio I grew up at and taking extra ballet classes just to kind of hone in my technique. And then I ended up going to Los Angeles um, to just take classes for a week with my studio. And when I was out there, I met with this guy, Keith Clifton, who was someone who I had taken classes from just randomly on convention, and we built a relationship. And so I was asking him, I was like, what are the next steps if I want to dance professionally? Because I don't know what to do or what I'm doing. And he ended up recommending me to his agent. And so I talked to them, I had a meeting, and I ended up signing with them right when I met with them. And I didn't realize that that was like, a little seed of what was to come and, and how hard it is to get an agent. I didn't realize that that was a little bit of a miracle, but you need to get out here and so I kind of took it as I have purpose here and I don't know what it is, but I'm ready to, to find it. The good, bad, and ugly of it, I'm ready to just sit and find it. So that's how I got here. That's so crazy. I'm sure you had to rely on like so much strength and positivity and all to get through that, but mm -hmm. um, I was reading your website and I actually read a blurb that you wrote and it was talking about making the impossible possible. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was just such a good message and it carried a lot of inspirational weight and I would just love for our readers to hear about what you had to say about that. There's this one song lyric that I heard a while ago and I really, really love and it's impossible is not a word but it's a reason not to try. Um, and I feel like on my journey in Los Angeles I've always been, had so much doubt or anxiety feeling that I wasn't enough, I was inadequate. And I think that everybody struggles with that. And so knowing that there's, there truly is nothing that's impossible if you allow yourself to be free in who you are. And I got different messages from fans or different people and I said, wow, I'm not just a dancer, I'm a person with a story and that comes first. And if I choose to be confident in that, and not say, oh, that's impossible, or I'm afraid, then that's when, like, you're ex it's like what you were born to do, share your life story. It's like anything becomes possible for you. Um, so I've just learned so much through being here and the opportunity and um, just trying not to limit myself because I know that's something that I can, I don't think it holds me back because I always mm -hmm. jump into things that scare me. But at the same time, um, I think I miss out on a lot of beautiful moments and miracles because there can be so much anxiety saying that I can't do things. Yeah. So when you realize that if you're in a situation, it's because it's possible. You wouldn't be put there if you weren't strong enough. So you have to let go of all the fears, give it up, and just be. Totally. And that faith and determination is taking you on such a cool journey. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you did so well and so you think you can dance. And that's some tough competition that you have there. Yeah. And you went so well and you must have been just so proud. I would just love to hear about what your favorite aspect of the show was or if you had a favorite mm -hmm. moment or anything like that. I have a really cool moment. There's so many moments, mm -hmm. I feel like, because I, season six I was a contestant and then seven, eight, and nine I was an all-star. And yeah. that's a completely different mindset of being on the show um, but my very first moment that I feel like is a constant reminder of my purpose of being on the show was I remember I auditioned three times and no one knows because I didn't make it past the first cut yeah. until I got on the show yeah. um, so I auditioned the first two for season five and I just remember comparing myself being so intimidated and just like going into the moment with one of the producers because you're not with the main judges at first on the wood floor and just trying to be what I thought he wanted and be more than what I was because I didn't think what I had was good enough because everyone beside me was either better looking, better dancing, could do more turns, whatever it was. 
And so I was afraid to just be. And so I tried so hard and it was spastic, it was horrible. I got cut right away and I, I just left so empty because I was like, I didn't even give any piece of my heart, any piece of my soul. And that's what's disappointing. Mm -hmm. And so left, auditioned again in Denver. Uh, the same thing happened. I was just kind of on stage and they were like, no thanks, we, we don't really want to watch any of you dance again, you can go home. So I was like, okay, this show's definitely not for me. On to the next thing. And I ended up coming back season six. So they were having an off season and my mom convinced me to go. Didn't want to go at all. But I didn't have the nerves because I was just kind of like, I'm not going to make it. So I might as well just come and be a good energy for people, whatever. So I was really cool all day. All of a sudden, you get, I got on the floor and I chose contemporary and they'll pick any song that they want to play for you to dance to. You could dance for 10 seconds, you could dance for two minutes. So I remember I was, I was number two and I was standing on the floor and the CD player was messing up a little bit. So I had all that time for all the nerves to kind of rush back into my body. And I just had this battle in my mind and I was like, Catherine, don't do this again. Like you do not do this again. You know, and so I remember closing my eyes and saying this prayer, and I was just like, God, it's me and you. Like, help me to completely let go of all of these nerves and just be there with you, dancing with you, you and I. And I remember I opened my eyes, and in the arms of an angel came on. And it gave me chills. And it was like, for the first time, I wasn't worried about what I was or what I wasn't. I was just present. And I think that's when the most beautiful moments happen. And so I can't even say I remember what I did on the floor, but all I know is I was in that moment and I got a ticket. And for the first time, after auditioning three times, the producer looked at me and he was like, I wanna see you again, come back tomorrow. And so I feel like the whole journey of getting on the show, it was constantly, I never thought I was gonna get past any cut or audition. I was just trying to be present in the moment and that was, the little miracle that reminded me that I don't know why I'm here or how I got here, but I have purpose and I'm supposed to be here. So that's kind of how I got all the way on the show. And even through my journey each week, it was me just trying to be present and let go of all the fear that I wasn't enough and just be like, okay, what, what, let the moment write itself. And so that journey was just me realizing how much I'm capable of and how powerful the gift that I've been given of dance is. And so that is such a cool feeling and I've learned so much from that. Um, in doing the show each season, I feel like I'm constantly growing and becoming more confident in my artistry and it just feels like home now. So it's, I'm so grateful. Yeah, that's so cool because you know, you go through all of this stuff where you're just like auditioning over and over again and having to do all this work and stuff to get on so you think you can dance as a contestant and then as an all-star the next season you're brought back and like you said it's just like a totally different atmosphere mm -hmm. what was it like really cool having the title as an all-star that they would want to bring you back and stuff like that I mean, that's so cool it was an honor because mm -hmm. I remember I got the phone call and it was from one of the producers and he was like I want to I want to talk to you and I have a meeting with you so I was just thinking okay maybe they're gonna ask me to come back and assist on the show. I had no idea that they were trying to create this whole um, idea of the all-star. So I ended up coming in. I thought it was just going to be me and him. And I walk into the room and it's all the different contestants of past seasons that I had grown up watching and admiring. So I'm sitting next to Twitch and Courtney and Comfort. And so I'm sitting there and I was like, what? How did I get here? What is happening? And then he tells us that we were the 12 or 13 that were handpicked to come back as all-stars. It was an honor. And I never imagined that I would be one out of the hundreds of people who've been on the show that they would ask me to come back. And so it blew my mind. I'm so grateful. Okay, so then after the show, then you went and tried your success in the film world and you got the lead role with Step Up Revolution, which was awesome and it came out this past summer. Was, was that just something that came naturally or were you pursuing acting along with dancing? How did that whole thing come about? So, I'll start from after So You Think. So I, I did contestant. I had some a couple months in between. I came back to, back in as an all star, and after that, I ended up getting a call from um, the Revolve tour, which was a motivational speaking tour. That it's really funny because I remember I was in a speech class in high school, and I was just like, I will never speak in front of more than five, ten people again because it terrifies me, you know. And so then I got asked to come on this tour and tell my story, basically what I'm telling you now in more detail. Um, 
to girls. And when I say girls, that's thousands of girls at a time. So over a matter of 12 weekends, we saw more than 70,000 girls. And I was speaking and telling my story. And so that was such, that was one of the most incredible opportunities I've ever been a part of to be able to stand on a stage and share a story that to me it didn't seem that significant and I'm sure to anyone when you live your own story you don't really think there's much to share but to other people it means so much to, so to step on a stage and have to overcome that fear realizing that it's not about me and my story I've lived it but it's only so that I can share it it's not about me or how I look or how I don't think it's it's like what I live and through that so many people can look at me from being on so you think her different shows and I think oh she's her life must be so good she must be if she's perfect this or that they don't see the in-between times they don't see that every morning I wake up the same I have the same thoughts in my head that they have the doubts the in-between times you know and so to be able to go on a stage and let people know that this is who I am this is where I'm from and I've had these opportunities but I'm exactly like you you know, and you are so loved and you are so beautiful and just because you haven't been on a TV show, it doesn't make you any less. You have your own path and your own plan and purpose and so that was incredible and that was something that made me more confident in my voice, in my story. So you think was something that made me confident in telling stories, portraying different characters every week. So little did I know, I was being prepared for Step Up this whole time because I was being prepared to be more confident in what I had to offer as a storyteller. And so I ended up getting done with Revolve and was just in this transition of, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. And I got this audition for Step Up. Almost couldn't go because I had something else going on. But then I ended up, they switched the time so I could come in. I remember I went, I had my first casting call for it, met with her, so nervous, but left. And she, afterwards she was like, I really like you. And so I was like, okay, maybe that was all right. I don't know how this is supposed to feel because it was one of my first acting auditions. Came back and it was with one of the directors, producers, um, casting. And I just kind of was opening, I told him about Revolve, I was talking about random things, and I remember leaving and I was like, that was so embarrassing, that was horrible, I'm definitely not getting a call back. And a couple days later, I got a call back. And so I ended up going in for the third audition with Ryan, my co-star, and it was just to test chemistry and how we danced together. So that one felt a little bit better. After that, I got another one, and I ended up, um, it was the final call, it was two guys and four of us girls, and we had to go in with each guy and do two different scenes for everyone and they put them on camera, different angles. And with that, I had no acting experience at all. And so I was so intimidated. But something happened in that time of that audition where I remember standing next to Ryan and before we went in, I was like, will you go over this with me? I just wanna, I didn't admit that I was nervous, but like, he knew I was. I was like, will you please go over this with me? So we went through the scene and it was okay. Um, but then all of a sudden I went in the room and Scott Spear, the director, started talking to me about his intention and what he wanted from Emily and Sean and the characters. And all of a sudden, I just felt this weight of purpose and I could just relate. And I remember sitting down and I don't know what happened, but time was just standing still. And you could hear a pin drop. It was so quiet in there. And we were just so connected. And I left and for the first time, I felt the freedom in my acting that I felt in my dancing and it was so beautiful and I didn't even think about getting the part I was just like yes like I had a good audition and I found that freedom awesome success conquered it walked away and two days later I'm driving and get a call from Scott saying that he wants me to be Emily and I like crumbled I remember my wrists got weak I was crying bawling like, had no idea that that was coming that's so amazing. That's such a cool story, and I love everything that you're about. I think it's really great, and I just think you're such a good role model, so I'd love for you to give any advice that you have to all of our Unleashed Beauty readers, because I'm sure that they would love to hear what you had to say. If you would have told me three years ago, this is where I would be, I could have never put that together, and in that time, I would have been so intimidated, because I'm like, I could never do that. But it's like, God prepared you in His time for your opportunities in the moment and you don't know ahead of time because if you were you'd probably run away from them you know you have so much potential to do great things and when you're ready they'll happen and they'll come into your life and so I think that our journey is just every opportunity we have it's not about 
the opportunity and what it looks like and how big it is in the eye of everyone, but I think that we have those because that's building our character. So the goal is to become just the best human, human being you possibly can and the opportunities are the ladder to become that and to create that and build that in your relationship. So um, just knowing that we all have a purpose and a plan and a place in this world um, and there's room for everyone to have success in their talents. You just have to have the patience and in the in-between times do the work as a person and, and love who you are be confident in what you have to offer, and if you are solid in that and work on that, opportunities are going to naturally come to you that fit you as a person. You know, I think so many times, especially being in LA, you just want to be working. So it's like, okay, if I have a job that means I'm successful, I'm doing things. I can tell people that I'm doing things. But at the end of the day, those just fill up time. Whereas when you can work on yourself as a whole, and then those those jobs that come in there a little bit fewer and far in between that's what's fulfilling and that's when you can really make a mark on the world so just be encouraged <laughs> well that's definitely encouraging we definitely appreciate you coming out with us today and um, I'm just so excited to see everything that you have to do in the future and we will definitely keep an eye out for you and um, make sure to check out Catherine's cover issue it's for winter and you can see that on our e-magazine and it's www.unleashedbeauty.com and you can also check out our Facebook page which is which is Unleash Beauty Magazine. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> I can't get the W's, right? <laughs>